and donate. Yeah. Yeah.
translate them into sophisticated grown up Well, there is now. 
<laughs> Norman did not relate to being a footman or a mouse or a pumpkin. He knew his character, Pig. And he was not about to give up his part in the play and go over and stand against the wall where a loser would stand. He intended to participate whenever Pig was fit to the scheme of things without giving up, without giving up dignity or identity. He took for granted there was a place for Pigs and that the teacher would know that. So what do you say to a kid who's already thinking of a costume, pink on underwear, hiking in her tail, and a paper cup for her nose? What do you say to an innocent little pig who doesn't see his career as an actor teetering on the brink of utter humiliation? And what do you say to all the pigs, all those who are different and do not accept the available boxes and pigeonholes? So what did the teacher say to them? Well, sometimes teachers talk more like fairy godmothers. So be it. Norman was declared the pig in the story of Cinderella, which was quite fine with the rest of the class. Nobody wanted to be the pig anyhow. <laughs> and since there was nothing in the script explaining what the pig was supposed to do, the action was left up to Norman. As it turns out, Norman gave himself one of the all-time best walk-on parts in the history of children's theater. He decided he was Cinderella's personal pig. Where she went, he went. He made her sound. He simply sat on his back haunches and observed what was going on, like some silently supportive Greek chorus. The expressions on his face reflected the details of dramatic action, looking worried, scared, anxious, mad, <coughs> bored, sick, and pleased, as the moment required. There was no doubt about what was going on, and no doubt it was important. One look at the pig and you knew. The pig was so earnest, so sincere, so very there. Norman created such dramatic tension that people who knew how the story was supposed to end began to have doubts. And at the climax, when the prince finally placed the glass slipper on Cinderella's foot and the ecstatic couple rode off to live happily ever after, <laughs> He went wild with joy, dancing around the stage on his back feet, and barking like a dog. <laughs> in rehearsal, the teacher had tried explaining to Norman, even if there was a pig in the Cinderella story, there is no such thing as a dancing, barking pig. Well, there is now. <laughs> it's true, Norman. It's true. Not the dead pig. The presentation of the teacher's conference was a smash hit. When Norman danced his dance, the crowd of weary teachers laughed and wept and cheered. And when the pig stumbled out for his curtain call, the applause turned into a spontaneous standing ovation. And the teachers knew that the real Cinderella was not the girl with the butt nose and blonde hair, but Norman, the dancing, barking pig. And they knew the real, the real fairy godmother was not the little girl waving her fairy wand, but the teacher standing, weeping in the wings. Kindergarten teachers know magic when they see it. Well, the kindergarten class had many invitations to come and perform their highly acclaimed production of Cinderella.